I do struggle with that sometimes. But the human connection, you know, I think if somebody gets on board and it makes them feel a certain way, um, right. and they're more likely to do good in the world and they're influencers, because most of my clients are influencers. I think life is made up of moments and a lot of them happen on the water. Yeah, um, yeah. And if I can create an environment for that to happen, I think that is doing good. Hello and welcome to Architecture, Design, and Photography. Today we have Kate Saramuth of Tax Studios and Yacht Interior Design and Head of Design and Owner. This interests me a lot because I love boats and good. design. That'll make this a lot easier. Oh, good. We, we like to make things easy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and in your, so give me some of your history coming up to uh, working as a yacht designer, both uh, not as much the technical parts of um, nautical hull design and all that, but more so the aesthetic design of the yachts and everything is what yeah. you do primarily. Yeah, so right. I grew up around boats yep. growing up in Kennebunkport, but um, more the type of thing where we'd hop on a friend's boat. It wasn't like my family owned sailboats right. all the time. Ironically, my father, who um, is an artist, was the dean of known as the Dean of Rowing and would paint for America's Cup. And so we were surrounded by oh, the culture, cool. I guess. Um, but I went to college for industrial design, yep. which you're probably familiar with, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was a great education in the fundamentals of design, like whether it be I found the same or, with architecture, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad that I went for that because it gave you, you know, what you needed um, to really do whatever mm -hmm. you wanted to do in, in the field. And... Um, I had three job offers after I got out of school. No, oh, that's nice. When did you get out of school? That was 2003. I took a year off to backpack with a friend. Oh, nice. Um, Where'd you go? I all over Europe. Um, nice. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that was. Let's see. 2003 is when I graduated as well. Yeah. I believe. It was a good time in the economy, and then it went. Ew. <laughs> yeah, 2008 is when it went yeah. in the marine industry. I mean, anyone right. in the industry will tell you that. Yeah, um, I, mean, I guess the marine industry is kind of a luxury thing. That kind of the first thing to get cut, I'd imagine, in a downturning economy. Would you say for, that? Um, depends. Depends what level you're at. Um, yeah. In the level I was at, where you know it was below 50 feet, below right. You know, maybe a couple million a boat. As you get over that, it doesn't like that kind of wealth just much, doesn't yeah. get. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, so coming out of industrial design school, did you want to go into nautical design, marine yeah, design so, in some way? So what happened, I was actually enrolled at Boston University for, uh, for, um, archeology span and then decided to take a year off and yep. backpack with a best friend of mine. Um, and I happened to be down, um, well, back up a little bit. I, I grew up, my parents are both designers and artists, so it oh, well. was in my blood for sure. And um, kind of had the realization backpacking, like, hey, I, I've got to do design. Like, that's... What is it that, that made you realize you wanted to create, essentially, rather than discover as an yeah. archaeologist or serve as a doctor, yeah. nurse, pastor, whatever? That, you know... I, yeah, I think it was more of a requirement like it wasn't even a, it was just it's in me it's like yeah. I have to be creating something all yeah. the time and I decided there's got to be a way to weave um the discovery uh which was what intrigued me about archaeology like mm -hmm. the fascination like oh my god this you know this object like someone thousands of years ago touched this and just that story right and to be honest I think I'm still figuring out the connection but it's coming clearer as I get to know clients more and their mm -hmm. spirit and kind of like archaeology of a person that yeah. you dig down oh find out about yeah. them and try and translate yeah. that into creativity yep um and hmm. refits especially are really interesting if there's a boat that has you know maybe was built a while back but a new owner wants to transform it yeah that's a real energy that you're shifting um yeah and it, it pulls so on the same strings I yeah. just I just bought a boat Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. oh, wow. a little 22 foot sea dory. It's a really ugly, awesome little boat. Yeah. So <laughs> it's got a little cabin and we can do like, you know, weekend camping and stuff yeah. with the kids. Super, and it's really utilitarian. Like you see the wires going through it and stuff. And, yeah. Um, there's very small niceties, but um, it's, it's interesting. The, I don't know, the, the, 
the space and feel it's like it's like a little vacation home um but it made me think of there's a it's a dory type hole and there's what i think is a dory type hole out on um timber point here in biddeford and it's uh you can still see the little copper nails and stuff in it um but there's a story behind it that's really kind of heartbreaking that it someone started refitting this boat someone's son that lived out on timber point right before i think world war ii oh. and you know the the refitting of it stopped halfway through and he was killed in the war oh, and then the boat yeah. has just sat there ever since and it's still there and you can go and see it and it's i guess the family had three or four sons and i think all of them but that son came back you know, wow. and, you know it's interesting the the story and everything that that there's such a romance to discovery and uh that time in water that yeah. that is such a different thing than your time on land that i don't know what it is but oh, there's something about I it i totally agree and that's why um that passion that you're talking about that's what interests me and that's what you know weaves it all together for me like i'm doing something for the greater good maybe it's not the whole entire world but it's if you can help shift something in a person and help yeah. them because boats are just in general i mean i've, I've worked in um, residential i did three years in new york city mm-hmm. um doing interior, that, design, interior design residential. um and i would welcome it back in my life at some point again but the thing with boats is that it's it's just a pa- it evokes a passion in people mm-hmm. um it's their pri- it's their niche it's their oasis on the water um yeah. and when you're i don't know about you but i think oasis in like general like because yeah. a home is that but a boat seems to be a even more personification of that yeah like it's the it's the special place within this but you know it's kind of where you want it's it's your dream it's where you want yeah how you want to be it's yeah. like you can create whatever environment you want out there and um I, I don't know about you but i shift a little bit i think my perception like when i'm looking at the shore from the water it's just i, I don't know it's just an oasis and creating that well, special place for clients is really gratifying I uh, mean, yeah that's interesting i aside from that i think just being a surfer yeah um you know i mean so much of what we're just made up of is water and then to be you know in that on it around it in that volume you know yeah uh, on an ocean there, there is something about it i have no idea what it is but i can experience it as far as that that draw to just be around it look at it see it feel it be immersed in it interact with it um and there's something especially i've always said this about sailboats it's really nice is that you you're it's a forced relaxation yeah as soon as you get out on a sailboat there's really no getting back fast right, right. so it's not like you can get back and finish that estimate or finish working on the garage or whatever you're like this whole day is just completely lost now i might as yeah. well just relax you know and i think that's really nice about boating in general and it's kind of same with power boats that it's a time investment that you commit to and you can't really easily get out of but sailing even more when we did own a sailboat it was like well just got to sit here and i remember the days when there'd just be a really light wind and the ocean would essentially be really calm and we'd just go on a really long tack and you just kind of sit there and you're in this quiet rhythm there's no motor or anything else and you're just gently moving along and it's really appealed to my cheap side too i was like wow (laughs) i am moving a big boat for free yeah i mean there's so many things about that like uh you know, I remember when my husband and I, we were, we'd only been together three weeks and we he's a woodworker um, mm-hmm. and we found a boat that was pretty much dead. I mean, it had oil, water, you know, a sailboat, you know, up to yeah. mid-level <laughs> and it was such a labor of love and we brought that boat back to life. And oh, wow. I remember sitting on board and feeling um, not a sort of selfish ownership kind of feeling, but like this is my little piece of the world right here and no yeah. one can take that from me even more so than when I bought my first house I mean this was like right this well for one it's the ultimate go anywhere too. it's the ultimate yeah. bug out vehicle totally because you know the world could go to crap and you're like well yeah, guess exactly. I'm gonna set out to see <laughs> right. but it's um I was just listening to something yesterday that was uh there's a real real connection and ownership when you build something with your own hands yep. you know that that uh 
is completely different than earning the money to pay for something and owning it. It's, yeah. it's a different, oh, different yeah. deal. There's a lot. There was, we actually just sold the boat, which was really hard for us. Mm, um, I bet. But, you know, my husband has a very, um, he's doing really well with his design build um, company and he's just really busy and I'm busy and, mm. um, you know, it was, that boat's kind of our love story, really. So it was really oh. kind of painful hmm. to sell her, but we, yeah. you know, we realized. What we kind of boat was it? It was a Pearson 30, a 72. Um, mm -hmm. And we're at the point now with the boys where something bigger and maybe a little less work. Yeah. Um, I found really like us. with a sailboat, it was so much, for the amount of time that I have to be able to go out on the water and the people I was generally taking out, sailing was a difficult thing for me to, interact with mm -hmm. just because you we'd have to take a dinghy out and then I'd have to take it like three or four times to get everyone out that wanted yeah. to go and then there's like putting all the sails up it's dealing a lot with all the line it's just for like long voyages and stuff really yeah. cool but yeah for for being out on the water and enjoying it in the small pockets that I yeah. can like a powerboat just makes more sense for me but I just I wish I wish they'd get their their game together with like electric motors and you yeah. wouldn't have to have like right. the well, they are. They are. But um, back real quick to what you said about um, sailing. I mean, you, especially as a family, um, I often say, you know, if a marriage is ever, ever having trouble, like they should sail together because you have to. <laughs> well, either that, like that could be bad. It could be bad at first, but you, it, it, for, you know, you Only have to. Only one came back. You have to communicate, <laughs> yeah, you know, you and as a family, um, you have to communicate. And um, just that quiet and hearing hearing the wind and the right. water and right. hopefully putting your phone away. Um, just get out of cell phone range. And I right? think, honestly, this is my theory. Every, a lot of other people in the industry will tell you, even brokers that have, have the biggest love for sailing, they'll say it's on its way out. Like it's, you know, nobody wants to buy them anymore. Um, I disagree. I think that things are going to shift. I think people, especially the generation that grew up sailing with their parents, mm -hmm. um, are gonna have a reality like a coming to like oh god my I need to teach keep, teach my kids to sail right. you know and um, I think people kind of get tired of being chained to their phones and oh gosh you know. yeah now and this morning I was just listening to a thing about how how much information valuable information you do get through social media and like things like Twitter and everything but at the same time how it just wears you down yeah that it's kind of they're finding that a lot of people go in these phases where they'll, all right, I'm going to interact with it. And then they just take like a yeah. six month, like yeah. I can't do it anymore. I'm one of those on the can't, I just like do not open Facebook or like really only do Instagram. And every time I do that, I lose like five, 10 minutes of my life. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. come on, get back to work. But right. I think it's interesting, like horseback riding, sailing, these are antiquated, uh, you things of utility in the past that now are just for basically just for enjoyment mostly um but they put you right in the moment don't they they do i mean my me. wife's a big horse person and we're we've got our house set up now for like a, a corral i guess you'd call it and then like a little thing and she's like next week i think we're getting three horses that we're gonna have for oh like gosh. two months you That's know cool. yeah we're just gonna rent them so but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh lovely. it's it's like boating or surfing it's a you know it's a passion for her and at the same time it's a and it's an incredible interaction with nature yeah I, the thing i don't like is you're on this massive beast that has a mind of its own and maybe tries to roll over on you and stuff don't much like that but yeah there is that like it puts you in the moment oh, it does. like you can't do anything so else I, probably some of my top memories of i've only ridden a horse a few times my top favorite memories are some of those moments. Although we were in Costa Rica this winter for vacation and uh, I rode a horse with Wilder, my youngest, on my lap. Mm -hmm. And there was definitely a language barrier with the guy taking oh. us out and there were no helmets. And we went down a really steep. Uh, so fear kind of took over on that one. Oh, I got yeah? a little bit. Did the horse seem to sense it? Or was uh, or he just like, oh, I hate taking these He was just rides. starting to canter like <laughs> down a rocky oh, really? kind of ravine. And it just, I got So a you just threw your hand back and went with it? Yeah, Joe had our other guy. Snowy um, River. <laughs> he wasn't scared. It was more me. But, uh, you know, I'd, precious cargo. I don't know. For me, it's weird with horses. I can, I'm like really apprehensive. But once I get on one and I have a big open space in front of me, I'm just kind of like, well, let's do this. Yep. And I'll usually just kick them and go for it. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But 
kind of like riding a big wave, I guess. But some people, some, when I say what my company name is, they think it's horse related. Oh yeah, um, I guess they could. Yeah, but it, it's not. But it's also wasn't just like a nautical term I clipped out of the, the sky. It has a lot of meaning. Um, Let's go you. there. Yeah. Um, so you're a sailor. So um, you know that feeling when you're about to tack. Yeah, it's kind of like take take note of everything yeah. and like all right something big's about to happen here yeah. and yeah and that feeling um with the rest of the crew or whoever you have on board i don't know but I, I get kind of a fire in my belly a little bit and mm -hmm. it's the same fire i get when i'm designing something mm -hmm. um they just it's the couple times that i get this feeling so right away i thought that's something you yeah, know? yeah. Um, and it's just it's a shift it's like it you know it, it reminds me of tacking like a project you know the naval architect, the client, the yard, you all have to work together and shift. And ironically, it's an upholstery term, mm. <laughs> which isn't everything that we do, but it's a piece of really? it. Really? Yeah, it's when, yeah, the tacking is a, is a part of construction. Oh, right. um, yeah, yeah. And I think it's hello in Swedish, maybe. So, oh, there yeah. There you go. Um, but, so yeah, when I came up with that, I grabbed my favorite design pen a lot of what I do is hand sketching mm -hmm. um, and I felt that feeling and I felt that feeling on paper and that was the first time I wrote that and that was the logo so the, so your first take on that became the logo yeah nice was my favorite pen yeah it's interesting how architects and designers like gravitate towards a very tactile like this is my favorite pen and well there's it's just the best it's like I, I don't know what I'll do when it, it, it will run out at some point it's like <laughs> a marker it's really more of a marker so how much do you hate the Apple pencil on that really clean <sighs> surface it's hard like, it you know it doesn't have any resistance to it yeah and um, you know digital sketching definitely like sometimes when I travel like I was in Malaysia a few times last year and it's mm -hmm. hard to bring all your sketch gear. I mean, it's right. nearly impossible. And so I've relied on the tablet, um, which has its perks, but it yeah. also, uh, you lose a little of the soul. Oh, absolutely. Um, but uh, I have this one product, I think it's called Morfolio, uh -huh. and you can do like layers of sketch. Yep. You know, you can just put a new layer on and it'll have an opacity of 50, 10, whatever yep. you want. But the problem is the tips on those apple pencils don't have enough drag to them they just yeah. like you know so there's not that resistance and yeah they just need to do a better job with that but resistance the, yeah well hand sketching though too in a scan oftentimes you'll lose something so yeah you know um but that's why you know sketching with clients is cool too so tell me about the design process for you you, you that fire in the belly and tack yeah. and everything else when you you interact with the client, you, they approach you, I'd imagine, and they're coming to you with, all right, we're, you know, dropping some serious, if they're, if someone's paying to have someone design the interior yeah. of their boat to begin with, that's going to be one stinking nice, expensive boat. Sometimes, most of the time, most yeah. of the time. I would, yeah, I would say most of the time. I would say 100% <laughs> <But, laughs> of the time. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, that I, I get tripped up on that sometimes because for me, I, I truly don't think I would take a project if I didn't gel with a client or if they yeah. didn't seem like they had the right um, passion for what they were doing. Yeah. It would be really hard because it's um, it's extremely intimate and mm -hmm. it's going to get even more intimate because right. I'm I'm still learning too how to kind of tap into that the spirit of that person and it, it's it's turned even a little bit like therapy sometimes like for what, you or for them for th I hope for them yeah. For me too, it always is every project. Um, because to answer your question, when I meet with someone, whether it's a refit or a new construction, um, you know, we like to meet them in person mm -hmm. um, first, and hopefully in their home to really get sort of a feel for their vibe and their style, but right. how they live too. Like, um, you know, what do you do in the morning? What's what's your routine? How do you, how do you live on your boat? Um, but when I get to the studio and I'm kind of you know arranging. Um, whether I'm sketching or picking materials or even just picking fabrics, um, I channel that energy sort of like, like when I'm painting, there's an energy flow through me. Mm -hmm. It's really, really similar. Um, and I kind of weave that into, um, the materials that I pick, I kind of channel their, their vibe. Hmm. And, and it's a little abstract to t talk yeah, about. Out no, loud, but, um, to me, it's really interesting because there's such an ability to quantify measure, you know, all the really precise materialistic ways of approaching things. You yeah. can, you can just take 
all the curiosity and meaning out of them and know them, package them up, put them on the shelf and use them to your utility and move on. Yeah. But this creative process that is just kind of like this woo woo magic that yeah. goes on in a person's head is so hard to, you know, uh, to, to quantify and, and fit into that yeah. material, math, science, whatever. Yeah. And it's just this magic that kind of comes out of people, which is, is really interesting. It is. And, um, the goal, and this has been happening more and more, is when a client walks on board and they, maybe they were tight or something, and you know they just take a deep breath and they're like, "Oh, you nailed it! Like this yeah. is this is my oasis. Like this is my spot. This is." Um, and I feel like I'm talking about energy a lot, but it, I do believe that that intention that I put in, or that we put into everything that we're doing, um, I don't think that goes away. I think that lives inside the boat and mm -hmm. what we put in there, and that. Um, and the energy of the boat, I mean, that, that, that alone, it's been through, um, you know, lots of tales to tell, uh, depending on the boat right? and the people that built the boat, the hands on there. Um, I feel really privileged to do what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm always pinching myself thinking like, you know, I'm, I get to, I get to overlay my creativity over what other people have yeah. created, right. you know, and, uh, it, it's weird because with my background and religious upbringing, um, I had a, a really preconceived idea that I had to do things that would immediately, like with my words and hands, like affect people's lives uh, in a positive way. So teacher, doctor, you know, yeah. uh, nurse, yeah. something like that, you know, and the creative aspect there was never very much embracing that culture. And I think a lot of it had to do with, um, the religious certainty mm -hmm. that was in that community. Uh, when you have that much certainty, uh, the, uh, process of creativity, uh, in an individual is it's kind of downplayed to a degree. Yeah. Um, and I, I never really considered like, man, I could make a living creating things right? yeah. or working creatively. And I also kind of thought that doing stuff like that was kind of meaningless to a, yeah. to a degree. Um, and moving away from that, uh, culture and, uh, doing things creatively that have helped people and, mm -hmm. and helped me find meaning and everything else. It's, it's made me realize the value in it. Now, at the same time, the things I do that make the money are, you know, making very expensive things look better and, you know, help, you know, I'm greasing the wheels of the economy yep. and, and there's no small amount of value to the, uh, it's not a small amount of value is what I should say. It's not, it, it's very good to have a very stable economy and jobs and everything else. And that is a huge part of uh, a tide that will raise all boats for, yeah. for humanity. I think it's, you know, um, but I, I still do find a little bit of lack of fulfillment because I'm not doing that direct thing of helping individuals yeah. as much with, with what I do. Um, and right now I'm seem to be rambling, but no, 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 I, 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 I get where <laughs> like, you're going, but do I, you ever experience that or think that, or is um, it just my own background? I maybe that, I mean, I constantly am trying to find a way to tie well, first of all, I think um, I was always uh, creativity was always honored in our house, like right. the best. You know, I mean, we were just painting and designing all the time, and that's uh, really cool. I feel really lucky for that. Um, but I'm always I'm I'm constantly trying to figure out. Um, I, you know, I was I was raised with a really beautiful spiritual and religious background that was very laid back, um, mm -hmm. but you know, doing good is, is really important. So sometimes I struggle with that. Like, okay, I'm giving people these boats that have a lot of money and, you know, making them beautiful. And that's kind of the inner thing that comes up once in a while when I'm, when I'm explaining out loud what I do. Mm -hmm. And it's not until I get the opportunity to really talk with somebody to explain and discuss my intention that I think it comes out. So sometimes I, I struggle with how to make that, um, pop to the surface f for somebody that's just like, say, looking at my website or, you know, um, you know, I also really want to find a way to give back to the environment for which 
you know, a lot of pollution is going on from from boating. And I, I'm a pretty positive person, so I think that being in it is uh, the best way to make a shift. Um, you know, mm. that I'm in the industry, I'm close to I have a better chance to shift things um, right. for a positive you know, um, and I've got a lot of ideas, but, um, I do struggle with that sometimes But the human connection. You know, I think if somebody gets on board and it makes them feel a certain way, um, right. and they're more likely to do good in the world and they're influencers. Cause most of my clients are influencers. Yeah. Um, or maybe there's someone on board that doesn't normally get out in the water and they have a, I think life is made up of moments and a lot of them happen on the water. Yeah, um, yeah. And if I can create an environment for that to happen, I think that is doing good. Hmm. Yeah, no. It, I think a lot of my uh, conflict maybe comes with, you know, the uh, a, a hyper focus on serving the, the downtrodden. So yeah. I'm, I'm never, you know, no one can afford to pay me right. to I, I hear you. do yeah. what they're, you know, that's downtrodden, right? But I can take what I am capable of doing and choose to use it in some way of like a charity or something else to help in that yeah. manner. And like I went over and tried to work at the kind of, I guess you'd call it local soup kitchen. And it was very difficult for me because I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't relate. I'm not a, I'm not a talk about the small stuff and encourage you inner, you know, personal interaction type of person. I yeah. just, unless I'm talking with someone who's uh, interested in the same things as me and can take it a little deeper, I'm kind of ineffective yeah. and useless. Well, I um, say useless, but yeah, I hear, I hear pretty what Pretty useless. I, there's people, like my wife has an incredible skill to just make people smile and to talk to them and make them feel cared about. And, you know, and I'm not that way. <laughs> so... I went over there and I tried to do that and I couldn't, um, I couldn't really connect with people, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to think of a way that I can do, take what I'm good at yeah. and apply it to what they're doing over there because what they're doing over there is helping those people. I think, um, even if I think that giving people things is not necessarily the best long-term effect, I think it's a, it's a short-term, uh, kind of bandaid that's, that's yeah. helping the people that need it. But um, do you find any way in, in the, in the economy, uh, in kind of sector of this economy that you're in that, that you're able to give back in that way at all? Or? Well, it's funny you'd say that, um, something I've been thinking about, um, I would say I haven't yet, but a huge thing that I've been thinking about are the common lines that keep being drawn aren't even necessarily boating related, but I'm mm -hmm. noticing the people I'm meeting <laughs> and the clients are, you know, Oh, they're amazing. I mean, they're very highly successful, like CEOs, um, musicians. Uh, I mean, name it. They're, it. The list is growing. Um, but their impact and where they are in their life, I mean, they're like the top of that, whatever they're doing. And um, right. part of why I think my dreams are happening is because for years I've been putting a lot of um, – intention and uh you know good good thoughts about what i want out into the universe say um mm -hmm. and trying to make contacts to support that creativity right. um so one thing i've thought is like wouldn't it be cool to have some sort of a dream foundation like whatever it is like a kid can come to you that maybe doesn't have the means to or they don't think but they have the drive and like wouldn't it be cool to connect them because I have personal relationships with people that I probably would have never met. Right. And wouldn't it be cool to like give them that leg up somehow? Like, right. hey, have lunch with this person. Because really that's what it takes, you know? To find there, there's outliers in any sector or part of our society from the very downtrodden to the high. There'll be outliers of people who just show drive and you know an ability to like if you give me a chance i'm gonna knock this yeah, out of the and park and that's me you know? i mean that's how i was and how i am yeah and so i appreciate that and i see that in people and i want to support that yeah so if anyone listening knows how to do that you know <laughs> i mean it really it's one of those things like i know it'll come to me and i'll figure out how to connect those dots but it's um it just hasn't happened yet but it, i think it will yeah um in your design process what's the What's the turning point in your process? I've heard different people 
uh, talk about it in different ways, but there'll be all the uh, requests and problems that a client brings and desires and everything mm -hmm. else. And then it has to funnel through you and you have to solve all these problems creatively and then put it into a package that makes the client feel like they've been heard and make them happy. And usually people say that there's a point in there where it all kind of like, Oh, you know, it just happens. Yeah. Do you experience that? Do you, do you see that? Yes. I feel like the work I do is all, all the projects are so different. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes there's a yard involved or new construction. Um, like when I'm really at the drawing board, like I've got a hull and a main engine room bulkhead and an anchor locker bulkhead. And I'm just like going at it. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I, I, the work I've yet to do what I know I can do in that department. Sometimes I'm, you know, working with companies or something. Cause I work with yacht companies too, mm -hmm. that have their own pr set of parameters. Right. Um, but that's when like, it, that's, I guess, personal to me and not really, it's, it's a combination of the client and me, but there is definitely a moment where I'm sketching and I'm like, Oh my God, like that's that, that, that's it. Like that's the right. golden moment. Um, and that often happens at the drawing board. Um, if a boat comes to me and it's already put together, but we're just looking for, um, materials or even just fabrics or something that happens, I think when I meet with the client and they have that moment, um, right. and I see it in their eyes or their body language or, um, that's typically when it happens. What do you, what do you think? Two questions. Like what's been the most, uh, enjoyable project for you? And two, what do you think of the more recent very minimalist yacht designs and everything coming yeah. out. So okay. m best project so far or most, most enjoyable. Um, well, I, I really compartmentalize new construction and refits and they have kind of their own categories, but for new construction, um, one of the most gratifying was one of the most early on. I worked with, uh, Morris yachts, who's now owned by Hinkley. Mm -hmm. Um, on a lot of new product development. Um, so again, it's that at the drawing board. And I think it's so special for me because it um, sort of catapulted <clears throat> where I wanted to go and how I wanted to do it and, and the realization of how my sketching impacted my design. Mm. Um, I'd worked for a lot of yacht companies sketching before, but this was probably my first sort of time sketching for a company being my own company. Right. And that right. was really powerful. Um, I just finished the GT series with Palm Beach yachts that are out of Australia. Oh, cool. And so I traveled to Malaysia a few times um, and sketched with the team there. And that oh, was wow. super gratifying because it was the sports car of their line. Right. Um, right. And so what's the design like for that? More? I mean, I can, you know, uh, I think most anyone can visualize kind of New England yacht sailboats and yeah. Hinkley Morris. Yeah, this Morris. wasn't that. Yeah. Yep. Um, they're, so if you look up Palm Beach, they're similar to a Hinkley, some of their, some of their, um, product line, but this one is more of the sports car. So it's like diamond stitched ultra leather and contrast mm -hmm. stitching. And I think, you know, one of them, we did a Wange interior, which is a really super dark wood, which you don't often see on a boat like that. Um, and that was cool because well, I was on the other side of the world, which was interesting. Um, and just uh, getting to fire up another team about something. I mean, it was a total collaboration. They'd done a lot before I got there, but um, getting to tweak what they'd done and kind of open up the possibility um, from a hand sketching standpoint and then carry it along and see the final product. That's always hmm. really gratifying. Um, so do you work a lot of times with a a boat builder will come to you with like, all right, here's the anchor locker, the, the engine bay and or naval architects. Yeah. Here's this. <clears throat> Give us everything else. Is that sometimes, I mean, it depends if it's a naval architect, you know, or now, anybody. Would you consider Hinkley a naval architect? Is that, um, am I yeah, getting they that do right? Their own new, I haven't done new product with Hinkley yet. I it would be fun to at some point, but, um, yeah. So it, a naval architects more, <clears throat> Like Stevens Waring up in Belfast is a naval okay. architect. Bell Trip in Connecticut. Um, they might get hired by a company to develop a line of, of boats or oh, a private right. client might find them. And that's cool <clears throat> because they give me kind of the big rocks like, okay, here's the mechanical, the electrical. 
here's where the you know bulkheads should go Mm -hmm. the big ones like the ones you can't really move and then i kind of play with that with the ga and figure it out all right and at that point you're (coughs) developing kind of the the line that's going to be replicated over and over it's not a individual design for an individual owner sometimes it's it's, uh, sometimes it is yeah sometimes i mean i've done i've helped companies develop product lines but Mm -hmm. i also have worked on like one-off which is also super fun Hmm. um so that's that's why that's part of what i love is that it's always different right that you know that was the biggest factor for me and going out on my own uh was just changing things up enough Mm -hmm. to to have to go to the same desk in like an architectural office setting to me was very difficult to have like a steady paycheck and the similar location very difficult for some reason personality quirk um yeah sitting at a desk is hard (laughs) for too long but if you can yeah if you can do it as your own rhythms dictate you know and really get into that zone of drafting and designing and everything and then come up from it have the freedom to go all right i'm gonna go for a jog i'm gonna go for a run i'm gonna go surf and then come back and like yeah i always find like when you're out recreating recreating you know the those all those problems seem to work out in your head Mm -hmm. you know and halfway through you'll like have the epiphany i love it that you know you can have your phone with you and just kind of like voice yeah you know uh, voice record the solution and then when you get back it's like you know it's done so i know i set my calendar alarms a lot like oh do this do that or if i have an idea <clears throat> yeah put it in my phone and you don't have to right <laughs> worry too much yeah so what is the as a as a yacht interior designer specifically you know i struggle with that because i do exterior too Oh yeah, but I've always feel like if I say I'm a yacht designer, that that's misleading because yeah, that's I don't like do I designed the whole. Yeah, that's a different <coughs> deal. But then yacht interior design and exterior styling is a mouthful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do, you know, I help companies do profiles, hmm. um, do cockpit design, all of that. So it's not really just interiors. Right. If you have a good idea, let me know. Hmm. But do you see? The, you see, the... like it's yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it's kind of like how. Um, as a architect, you cannot call yourself an architect unless you've passed all your boards. Yeah. Uh, and you can get in legal trouble if yeah, you do. Right. So it's a it's a weird kind of thing. Right. What is the what is the dream project for you? Uh, is it yeah. a is yeah, it a is it a cruise um, ship? <laughs> no, it's definitely not a cruise ship. Yeah, I know. Um I would love to do a very large sailboat. Um very dynamic. What size are we sleek, talking about? Probably, I mean, at least 120 feet. Oh, wow. Um, I've got it in my mind. Like, I just, that's where, you know, my sketching lens lends itself to that kind of design, too. Right. Like, um, I want, I really want to be doing art on the water. Mm. And sometimes I've struggled with, and I know I'm, I'm working my way there, but, you know, when you work for a company or even as a contractor, you, you really carry with you their style and their story and Mm -hmm. I just so long to just break out and get what's in here just out there right um so if if you're designing something without in like if you're designing a 120 foot boat for yourself what's that look like aesthetically and does it go the direction of my other question like more modern probably more modern really yeah Uh, I definitely appreciate the traditional I've certainly done it but um it's kind of like, you know, when I, if I, I don't paint a lot, I plan to paint more, but even my, when I paint, it's a little bit, it's simpler, Mm -hmm. um, very more saturated, um, more, less elements, I guess, than what I'm doing now. I love detail. I love putting detail in certain spots, but I think you just pick the right spots. What are the spots in a boat where you love detail? Um, I love doing, um, you know, a lot of my clients are, car guys and i i it resonates with me my father designed cars he designed the trans am actually um, what? before he moved to maine yeah wow um and Did so he put the thunder chicken on it he drew that we have sketches yeah serious yeah um, i'm talking to the daughter of the yeah. guy who drew the thunder chicken that's awesome <laughs> but um my favorite memories with my dad are he had a shelby cobra when we were growing up and we'd jump, oh, wow. jump in there and he'd take me on rides and go really fast and um I don't know. I, I have a really close relationship with my mother and my father. And since we're talking about my father, um, 
that automotive thing mm -hmm. um, really it's just in me and actually that was my internship in college was doing concept cars with Nissan out in La Jolla oh, oh cool and so when I have a client that's a car guy, I can tell because I ask oh, yeah. them if they are and they like light up and oh, they just God. start talking about, you know, their cars. And um, so I've found like really cool stitch detail, um, whether it's a contrast stitch or um, or really unique wood detail. Mm -hmm. um, those are the details. In fact, um, so my husband, who has a wood lab, a woodworking company, we uh, have been trying to figure out how to weave our two businesses sure. together because his detail is like just what I'm talking about. Right, I mean, right. we need to build a boat together someday from scratch That'd be interesting. Um, or design one anyway. And so I've, I've like you talking about Trans Am and all that. I have a very odd, uh, design. Uh, what I appreciate is often very quirky and weird, kind of ugly, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like the boat I just bought is is a weird looking little boat, but it I love it. It's you know extremely utilitarian, and the car I drive is is, is a Mitsubishi Delica, and it's a, it's this really weird kind of squat brick mm -hmm. of a little van, and it's interesting to me to me uh, the difference in the sexes, and I'm, I wonder if you found this, but I bet you lean more towards my generalization of men that. It's, it's a very odd shape that you don't see in the U.S. It's an imported mm -hmm. uh, van. And anytime I drive down the road, it's always men that are like, you know, they, their peripheral vision picks up a mechanical shape that they haven't registered yeah. before. And I'll notice myself, like, going, just coming back from a job yesterday, going north on 95, it was, uh, I think it was the Alfa Romeo just came out with a, kind of an SUV. I just haven't seen it before. And Alfa Romeo has that very uh, unique grill, you know, mm -hmm. theirs. And it's just like a peripheral vision thing, you know. It's like, oh, there, yeah, you know. And it's so weird, like hundreds of cars going by, and boom, the odd one yeah. out. It just grabs you. And every single time, 99% of the time, it's men that like stop and like look at the van or like, whoa, you know, they're just a total dude magnet, yeah. you know. I'm kind of um, like that. I'm kind of, yeah. It, it's interesting. I wonder why that is like evolutionarily or whatever i mean that, i was also only there were only like two or three of us in industrial design at school there I were mean, women that were women yeah yeah i don't know I, maybe, is it is it just the i want i because it's that nature nurture thing yeah you know like and and i wonder if it is nature and it's just like stereotypically within the bell curve women tend to be far more uh, relationally oriented and less visually concerned in those areas, maybe. This is large generalization. But I would imagine having that um, just natural propensity for that, but then also having this ability that you do within visual aesthetic design and, and everything else like you do, I would imagine that would be in some degree like a superpower. It kind of is. You know? I mean, I, yeah. Do you sketch at all? I used to a lot um, when we when I was designing our house that we currently live in. Uh, I sketched a lot around that and then passed it off to my friend Caleb to point out all the things that yeah. I drastically messed up. Um, well, I, th I think you would get, you know, maybe even when you're photographing, when a line suddenly, whether it's a curve or an arc or whatever, but it hits a point of harmony mm. and you just know it. Yeah. It, that, that's how I feel when I sketch. And sometimes when I see a car or a boat where the profile's just right it just hits that sweet spot see that's that my oddity my though like i like these odd things okay yeah like the the things that are like odd, well sometimes but sometimes but that hits that chord for you yeah you know, i don't know yeah. um but yeah it, it's and it's interesting and uh anything dynamic gets me you know yeah i mean the the sailing yachts that like hinkley and stuff they make they're, they're just like you know, just these beautiful yeah. forms on the water that are just, you know, and to see the, the generally it's teak blending into the brass and then back down the guys down here, Remery's Boatyard, they make a, I don't know, like a 10 to 14 foot little runabout that's like a hundred some thousand dollar boat, Yeah. you know, and it's just these beautiful brass integrated details and yeah. stuff. It's just a work of art. Yeah, you know? it really it's, is. Yeah, Hinkley's are gorgeous there's so much in Maine I mean the heritage here is 
Amazing. That's yeah. why it's nice. A lot of my, um, I don't like the word competition, but I guess you could say it is in Lauderdale or Newport or, um, you know, but I like, I like being based in Maine. I mean, clients ironically have been all over, all over the world and not really so much in Maine. Mm. Um, and I've been really making an effort to try to get more here. I just well, opened there's a, a <laughs> deep history here <laughs> yeah. in New England for I that. I just opened a, um, showroom slash client lounge in Belfast at Front Street. Shipyard. Oh, really? Cool. So, yeah, it's nice to just have more kind of formal ties here mm -hmm. while, you know, obviously accepting clients anywhere they are. But right. um, I'm really proud of being based here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the sailing and the coast of Maine is just, you know, it's astounding. Oh, you can't beat it. I mean, yeah. My parents just moved here uh, last summer and my dad's a big, you know, Rocky Mountain kind of guy mm -hmm. and he loves fishing and they got the freedom boat club membership yeah. and they go out on casco bay and he's in love with it now is he he's loving just it? like yeah. casco bay is amazing uh, he just goes uh, on and on about it with kids it's such a gift i think oh yeah it's <coughs> it's great that you can just have that ability to like skirt out to the ocean and if it gets rough you can skirt back in and still enjoy yeah. it and be in calm water if you want and, and exploring the islands yeah yeah my yeah. my kids are both pretty excited about that because we had a boat and then we after a while uh had to sell it and then uh just got this new one, so. So you're splashing her now? She's in the water? She's at Port Harbor Marine right now. The rails on the side, the rivets came off. It's in 1994 and they're aluminum, you know, it's wore out after a while. So they're repairing that and then just going through the engine, making sure it's, yeah. you know, good to go. So once we have that, we'll have an anchor in sea tow if things go wrong, so. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the core isn't spongy. I, uh, I don't know how to exactly do that. Um, it's a you would tell you would know if cork. you were on the deck and it was you could feel it. But you're, that's a twenty-two. You said yeah, yeah. It's so it's not like there's a ton of deck to worry about. No, no, and it's they're from what I can tell they're pretty bomb-proof, uh, yeah. kind of like whalers to a degree. Yeah. Um, we have a gr old Grady White too. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Just because it is nice to have, you know, a powerboat and a sailboat with kids. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So the guy who owned my boat before me, he kept a log, an actual That's like awesome. handwritten log for the five years that he owned it. Like all this stuff of like replace screw on the starboard, yeah. you know, and uh, went out so-and-so pass in Connecticut, uh, took a nap, read, you oh, know, that's awesome. like every single day, GPS coordinates, like he printed up a sheet that he just filled out. And it's, it's really interesting to just leaf through it. Yeah. But it's kind of sad at the same time. Like I went, immediately went to the last entry, you know, to see what he had done for that day. And, you know, I kind of look at it and wonder, like, did he know this was the last time I he know, was going yeah. out on the boat? And That's cool. He uses it, though. I, I um, give a leather captain's log to all my clients at the end of a job. Oh, yeah. Not everyone does that anymore. And it's it's nice you know, to kind of document each cruise. Yeah. I mean, a form of a form of journaling that, uh, you know, that re it's very reflective and slow down time when you're on the water. Yeah. And I imagine if you'd somehow uh, kind of update captain's log to also kind of get a little more um, existential to a degree, you know? And yeah. What did I think about life this day on the, on the water? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's been really interesting uh, talking about all this uh, just completely jives with everything I'm interested in. So good. <laughs> thanks for uh, yeah. coming down. Are you based in Belfast now or are you in Portland? Um, no, uh, right now um, in North Yarmouth out North of our Yarmouth. old farmhouse. Oh, cool. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah, but most of the time I go to clients. So, yeah. And, However. but you have a storefront in Belfast then right now? A storefront of sorts. Yep. A showroom. Yep. Nice. <clears throat> it's most kind of a client lounge, but it's got my meat and potatoes of all the what I need to get through a design yep. conversation with a client. Oh, cool. So, yeah, they're getting great, great boats up there. So Yeah, Belfast is such a nice little town. Yeah. Every time I drive through there, I try and stop and get lunch or something and check it out. It's really, it's kind of the new Portland of the yeah. mid-coast, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was really good to connect with you and talk about these things. So yeah. thanks for coming down. Yeah. Have a nice day. You too. <laughs>